Wednesday, FOMC uh, and FOMO could potentially be going on, right? So Mark made a comment, did anyone catch the move? And I'm sure you guys have seen the uh, Euro dollar. Um, and if you're new as well, by the way, um, one of the things that I, I, I don't, I haven't traded the news for maybe a couple of years now, um, in a sense that I don't sit around and wait for um, the news to print. Um, more than likely, uh, the news uh, has been priced in basically to the price. So the only time I really am looking to trade the news, if I'm looking to trade it, is if there is some sort of um, major uh, uh, unexpected move. Yeah. And even if there is an unexpected move, let's just say, for example, as an example, the a central bank is going to what's the, what would be the biggest thing you could probably expect? Maybe a central bank is looking to hike rates. Yeah. So you see a hike in rates or you see the market price in from early because the market likes to price in, you know, two, three, five, ten months in advance, as we know through, for example, bonds, right? And bond yields and bond prices could be even years in advance, yeah? But let's just say they're expected to hike rates. By the time they actually hike rates, so it's buy the rumor, buy, rumor, sell. The fact, yeah? By the time the hike actually comes, if this is price and that's time, it's the reason why you don't really see much reactions anymore to um, news events because it's already been priced in yeah now where the edge is is if there's a surprise so let's just say the central bank is meant to high rates so that's normally positive for a, uh, a, a currency and it appreciates a currency but then all of a sudden the central bank end up cutting rates right just to say we're in fantasy land but they do that yeah the market has to then reprice yeah reprice what they thought you know, if that was the exchange rate, whatever that exchange rate is, maybe might be two, yeah? Now it's no longer seen as two because now they're cutting rates rather than hiking rates. So that's where you want to look for trading opportunities. But if um, the market, let's say, for example, it comes out as expected, yeah? But we still get, you know, higher prices, price continues to go higher. All right, that's cool, isn't it? Right, we would have, we probably would have been in from down here because we understand fundamentals and we're always trying to be ahead of the curve anyway. But let's just say, you know, you're new and you know you don't really understand these things, not yet. Once the news comes out um, and it continues to go higher, all we're looking for is just pullbacks. We don't ever FOMO in. Do you know what I mean? We we're not trying to be driven, drawn in by uh, price because price is manipulated every single second of the day. Do you know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's about the edge is really with where when there's unexpected news. And even if you miss the unexpected, let's say, for example, again, um, you know, the central bank end up cutting rates rather than hiking rates. This ends up being normally ends up being a CPR anyway. right? Because there would have been traders buying as we go higher. Then we get the surprise, the shock, the capture, the pain and then the relief. Yeah. If prices ever do come back up here, there's definitely going to be traders caught in this area. So there's always a second chance at some point to get involved in, you know, the trade. Or you can just continue to look for pullbacks at supply zones. You might necessarily get in. Oh, getting real. You might necessarily get in at the absolute start. But if it is an absolute shocking, if it's an absolute shocking um uh, or unexpected news event, yeah, just get in on pullbacks. That's all you're looking for is just pullbacks into, of course, supply zones, whether it be daily or intraday or CPR zones, and then look for look for that, yeah. Um, so that's the way I would uh, I, I look to kind of trade the news. Um, yeah, but as it, that's, that's what I was going to talk about, the uh, euro just quickly. So... My thesis on the euro dollar is that if you, if this doesn't follow through and it doesn't look like it's following through, then I am prepared for more shorts, but I'm not basing my decision on price action. There's no way I'm basing my decision on price action. No, 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 no. I'm basing my decision on news, right? Oh, Chris has got thingy. 
Right, so I'm basing my decision on the news. So this is the latest article on Bloomberg. So um, this came out, I think maybe about, uh, what's that, maybe about an hour ago. And it's quite interesting. So it says, the Fed keeps zero rate outlook, sees inflation bump short-lived, yeah? So um, it says, central bank sees inflation set, settling back after jump after jump this year seven officials see higher rates in 2023 up from five before so higher rates yeah in 2023 means that in 2023 by 2023 or into 2023 they should want to hike rates so they're looking all two years into the future right so let's actually matter of fact let me play this article and we can kind of dissect this so rather than looking to follow price yeah this could just be which i think it is um obviously i could be wrong but if price doesn't follow through it will have all of the hallmarks of getting people and getting traders to fomo in and this is what mark was saying fomo because all they do and how you know if, if you still trade like this basically not i'm talking about where you see a massive candle then you feel that you're going to miss out because you know price should end up going higher right there's momentum there there's prices are following through but again the question is why is prices following through did the fed say something out of the ordinary did they say something that should weaken the dollar yeah this is this has to be the question why are you buying this is why i, I can never subscribe ever ever subscribe to just technical analysis alone it just doesn't make any sense to me um but yeah let's 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 basically break down this article now yeah so you know i haven't i've, I've kind of skimmed this so i know kind of roughly what's in it but um i thought i'd leave it for 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 our um uh, for our group call so let me know if you guys can hear it as well by the way i'll pause it for a sec so. fed keeps zero in outlook sees inflation bump short-lived can you uh, can you guys hear that? Yep. All right. Cool. So let's go through it now. Federal Reserve officials continue to project near zero interest rates at least through 2023, despite upgrading their U.S. economic outlook and the mounting inflation worries in financial markets. Right. So for me, for for me, that is still positive, right? So yes. They're continuing to project near zero interest rates. So at the moment, I think we're at zero point, is it two five or something like that? Is it zero point two five the uh uh economic data uh interest rate the US, yeah, zero point two five, right? So they're basically near zero. And so they're just basically saying you know, that interest rates are probably going to stay there. Yeah. Because remember inflation is rising or supposedly rising. Um, so they're not going to be cutting rates, not at all. Yeah. But also as well, it says, despite upgrading their U S economic outlook and the mounting inflation worries in financial markets. Yeah. So there's inflation worries, meaning inflation might, you know, get out of hand, going beyond, you know, the, their usual 2% target. So it's still looking positive. Does everyone understand this, by the way? Yeah. If you don't understand, let me know. If you don't understand, let me know. Yeah. I'll take your silence for everybody is understanding what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, cool. So everyone understands why that isn't negative. In fact, that's probably more more a bit more hawkish not necessarily in their language but it's it's positive for the dollar right it's definitely positive for the dollar especially when you compare it to what europe are saying in the ecb anyways let's continue let's continue the decision which came on a volatile day for investors with treasury yields surging ahead of the announcement masked a growing number of officials who saw a lift off before then though chair jerome powell stressed this was a minority view the strong bulk of the committee is not showing a rate increase during this forecast period, Powell told a virtual press conference Wednesday following the decision, adding that the time to talk about reducing the central bank's asset purchases was not yet. Seven of 18 of... So they're basically just saying, look, we're just in a wait and see. We're not reducing asset purchases. What is asset purchases? It's basically bond buying. So, so at the moment, they're buying a certain amount of bonds. I can't remember exactly how much billions it is, but they're buying bonds to support the market and buying basically the government debt. Now, a reduction in asset purchases 
will be positive again dollar because they don't necessarily have to print so much. They don't have to expand their balance sheet. They have to print so much to buy, you know, government debt, meaning that the dollar should want to strengthen. So what they're saying is, is that they're saying adding that the time to talk about reducing the central bank's asset purchases was not yet. So they will be in the future because remember, we're always future thinking. Yeah, always thinking of the future. Don't we're not reacting. We're trying to, um, you know, be proactive. Yeah. Um, so that it's just not yet. Yeah, but it's on the horizon. So they're talking about reduction. The thing is, they're not talking about increasing asset purchases, are they? This is the this is this is how we have to think. They're not thinking about that. The conversation is a reduction in asset purchases, and it's just not yet. So again, more positive dollar news. Yeah. Officials predicted higher rates by the end of 2023 compared with five of 17 at the December meeting, showing a slightly larger group who see an earlier start than peers to the withdrawal of ultra-easy monetary policy, according to the Federal Open Market Committee quarterly economic projections issued alongside its policy statement. Right. So just, again, just quickly, I don't want to keep pausing it after every single um, uh, uh you know, paragraph, but just quickly, it says seven of eight of 18 officials predicted higher rates by the end 2023, depend, um, compared with five of 17 at the December meeting. So that's basically more of, you know, the Fed officials are seeing or, or predicting higher rates. So there's more of a, the, the consensus is getting higher in the, the view that they may hike rates you know, by the end of 2023. So that's, again, another bullish sign. If, you know, it went from, you know, it went from five to seven, right? But if it went from maybe five to two, then that would be negative, right? Because then there'd be less officials thinking that they were going to hike rates, but it's increased. The view consensus is growing. Um, let's just continue on. Indicators of economic activity and employment have turned up recently, although the sectors most adversely affected by the pandemic remain weak, the FOMC said in its statement. Inflation continues to run below 2%. Follow reaction in real time here on Bloomberg's top live blog. The Fed expects that a bump in inflation this year will be short-lived. Officials saw their preferred measure of price pressure slowing to 2% next year following a spike to 2.4% in 2021, according to the projections. Excluding food and energy, inflation is for. Yes, yeah, so just quickly. Remember, we always have a two percent target. Yeah. So what they're saying is, is that you know their preferred measure of price pressure slowing to two percent next year, following a spike. Yeah. So this this would be after a two point four percent increase in inflation in twenty twenty one. So this year. So they're expecting their expectation is for two point four percent, which would be above their inflation target of 2%, but then they expect inflation to kind of cool off to around 2%, yeah? Um, excluding food and energy, inflation is forecasted to hit 2.2% this year and 4 to 2% in 2022. But that, again, is all positive for the dollar, yeah? Cash to hit 2.2% this year and fall to 2% in 2022. 10-year Treasury yields remain near one-year highs after the statement with stocks reversing losses. Asked about the move in yields, Powell noted that it was important conditions continue to remain accommodative and that he would be concerned by disorderly markets, repeating a line he used earlier this month. Massive fiscal support and widening vaccinations that will help reopen the economy have buoyed investor expectations for rate increases and inflation, propelling Treasury yields higher as the Fed and federal government keep adding stimulus. Good. Wednesday's decision was unanimous. Asset purchases. U.S. central bankers left asset purchases unchanged at $120 billion a month and repeated that this pace would be maintained until substantial further progress is made on their employment and inflation goals. The target range of the benchmark federal funds rate was also kept at 0 to 0.25%, where it's been since last March. Powell and his colleagues met as the economy continues to improve. Job gains picked up last month and President Joe Biden signed an additional $1.9 trillion of pandemic aid into law on March 11th. Vaccinations continue apace, allowing states to start easing lockdown restrictions that could release a torrent of consumer spending. That's positive. The economy remains far from the Fed's goals, though. 
even with 379,000 jobs added to payrolls in February. 9.5 million fewer Americans have jobs compared with a year ago and inflation remains well below the Fed's 2% target. This particular downturn was a direct hit on the part of the economy that employs many minorities, Powell said. Still, prospects for stronger growth have ignited some concern about higher inflation, contributing to a rise in 10-year Treasury yields in recent weeks. Powell told lawmakers in testimony last month that the economy is still has a long way to go before there's any risk of overheating. They also upgraded forecasts for economic growth and the labor market with the median estimate for unemployment falling to 4.5% at the end of 2021 and 3.5% in 2023, while gross domestic product was seen expanding 6.5% this year, up from a prior projection of 4.2%. Christopher Waller, who joined the Board of Governors in late December, contributed projections for the first time this month. So, after hearing that, was there anything that anyone could say was negative within this article. It's, it sounds more positive than negative, right? You would agree? Yep. Yeah. Sounds definitely more positive. Definitely more growth as we saw in the last in the last paragraph. They also upgraded their forecast for economic growth in the labor market with the median estimates for unemployment falling to 4.5 at the end of 2021 and 3.5 to 2023, while gross domestic products were seen expanding 6.5 this year up from a prior projection of 4.2. Doesn't pretty much get more positive than that, right? Again, there are cautions. There are definitely um, concerns. You know, nothing is set in stone. But remember, this is a, I guess, a, a buy the rumor, sell the fact situation and as long as the data still supports this is this is the key thing the data has to support the the narrative so as long as the data comes out and you start to see positive you're still seeing positive gdp numbers positive in inflation numbers yeah you can just literally continue to buy the dollar that's that's literally it this is a trade idea that you can have for a very long time and then you, you know, you, you basically trade against a currency that maybe isn't doing so well. Yeah. So when we go back to the euro dollar, yeah. What do you think the smart money are doing? Anyone know what the smart money are doing? Do you think they're buying or they're probably looking to get buy the dollar at a, <laughs> that's exactly it, Paul. That's exactly it. Because then you would go to the euro and say, well, what's so positive about the euro? You know, I was watching, um, I was having dinner, I was watching the um, the news and, um, you know, Europe are threatening, <laughs> threatening the UK to, uh, uh, um, about trade, um, talking about uh, the trade between the UK, they're going to disrupt it or do whatever because if if the UK don't give them more vaccines, for example, you know the Astra's, the Oxford AstraZeneca, right? So it's there's problems there in Europe. The, their rollout is far behind everyone else. So for me, yeah, and if also as well the e, the EU UK Irish Irish border as well. Exactly, there's 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 problems there, right? But just in general, when it comes to the vaccine rollout, yeah they're having problems, they're having problems. So for me, this is definitely not gonna make me FOMO, 100% it's not. It's, if anything, I'm just looking for trades to the downside. So what I would probably look for, just to wrap this up, would be, can anyone can anyone see what kind of uh, trade this, this may look to be? What kind of setup? What kind of setup would you see? Would you would you would you think that this is or could be? Stop hunt, yep. Yeah. Maxwell's on it. Stop hunt. You're starting to see. Nice little level. Nice accurate level there as well. Just turn that to uh Nice levels, yeah, nice ranging market. Go in a bit more detail, you can start to see that area there. 
you've had support, support, resistance, support. Yeah, Let's drag that back as well. Nice support and resistance in and around there. So it, it is a level that has been used. It's been used there, used there. All right, and we've got a nice ranging market. Yeah, bounce off there, bounce off there. It's definitely not trending. Now, this is where the FOMO, this is this, this is gonna be a very nice CP, um, a stop plan if this if this happens. Yeah, if, if you start to see a breakout above that level there, and then it starts to come back inside. That for me is 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 nice, is very nice. So let's see what happens there. Let's see what happens there. Also, as well, it's best to check what bonds are doing. So bond yields, ten year, ten year sold off a little bit, but it's coming back. So it's still at the highs. It's still at the one point six four. Doesn't look like it's, it doesn't it didn't sell off massively, right? Look at that. If you're looking at that from, you know, the perspective of, you know, any kind of pullback, that isn't really any kind of sign of a reversal. If it started really falling like this, then I'd be like, hmm, there's something there, right? There's maybe maybe they're taking it negative. But we just read the article. Bond market are the smartest guys in the room. There's really no kind of sell off. Maybe some sort of profit taking or something. Maybe just a bit of a deeper pullback. But overall, doesn't justify, definitely doesn't justify, you know, the, the euro dollar move. So for me, that I think would be a really nice manipulation up top for a short trade. And if not, if that doesn't work out, then fine. There's going to be other levels up top around here that will be um, that, I'm, that I'll be looking to uh, to take as 